The Assembly will hear an address <clears throat> by His Excellency Rok Mark Christian Kabori, President of the FASO and President of the Council of Ministers of Burkina Faso. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Rok Mark Christian Kabore and to invite him to address the Assembly. You have the floor, Your Excellency. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, candidate for Africa to the position of President of the 74th General Assembly, you were brilliantly elected on the 4th of June of this year. And it is my great pleasure to address you on behalf of my delegation and on my own behalf to extend my hearty, heartfelt congratulations. You have assumed the, your, this function in both in service of your country, Nigeria, and you have a perfect knowledge of the United Nations. And we wish you every success on behalf of Burkina Faso. And Madam President, history will remember that in 70, 40 years of existence of our organizations, you were the fourth woman to be elected president of the General Assembly and the second in 50 years. Given the remarkable work that you achieved and the results, please receive, Madam President, my congratulations for having met such major challenges around the theme of the 73rd year. Mr. Secretary General, may I begin by renewing our recognition and gratitude to you on behalf of the Burkina Bay people for your personal commitment and that of the United Nations and your support to my country in difficult times. This is the time to renew my encouragement for implementation, courageous implementation of reforms undertaken and to congratulate you on your report presented on 24th of July 2019 to the Security Council on Activities of the Bureau and the Sahel. The declaration of the Security Council President on the issue of security on this occasion augurs well for the future. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, this year, this 74th session has the topic of, and I quote, galvanizing multilateral efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion, end of quote. Burkina Faso is pleased with the theme chosen due to its relevance and to the fact that it is a very current topic. Because more than ever, multilateralism is, for my country, the only path to finding solutions to the great problems of the world. And to these challenges, we must add combating terrorism and violent extremism, organized crime and cybercrime, which no country can vanquish alone, regardless of how powerful it is. And given all that has been achieved by the United Nations in peacekeeping, security, justice, human rights, development, and fighting climate change with the Paris Accord, given those achievements, we must imperatively work to bolster multilateralism and the role of the United Nations as a means to finding solutions to the problems of our planet and to do so together. Sir. While there are phenomena that are sad in our world today, and they are first and foremost terrorism and poverty. Since January 2016, our country has had to face ongoing terrorist attacks, unprecedented in scope, the impacts of which at the human level, social and economic level, are heavy in consequences. Escalation of violence and insecurity has led to an unprecedented humanitarian crisis with many victims, civilian and within 
the security and defense forces with hundreds of and thousands of internally displays, closed schools, health care infrastructure, and other infrastructure closed down, all symbols of states that have been destroyed. Destabilization continues through destabilization of communities who are shifting given violent confrontation. Turning to public finance, I'd like to look at the increase in expenditure for security to the detriment of financing for social development and development. I take this occasion to applaud the United Nations accompaniment of Burkina Faso given its unraveling of the security and humanitarian situation. And indeed, Burkina Faso's eligibility to the peace building fund announced by the Secretary General of the United Nations made it possible to have an interagency mission led by the Special Representative of the SG for Africa and West Africa and the Sahel, and to form an emergency task force under the leadership of the Undersecretary General to open five regional centers of the United Nations outside the capital to be closer to the population in their difficult moments, and to ensure support for international partners is well coordinated and aligned on an agreed upon strategy which is comprehensive and integrated and which establishes a link between prevention, emergency aid, recovery and development, the government requested an assessment mission to look at prevention and peace building by the African Development Bank, the European Union and the World Bank, all of which is currently underway and recommendations are about to be issued. Turning to poverty, eliminating poverty is one of the main objectives of ODA because the United Nations says that thousands and millions of people live below the poverty level. And if this trend is not reversed, more than 168 million children will be living in abject poverty. More than ever, the international community must intensify its fight against poverty to eradicate it, which is the sine qua non condition for sustainable and inclusive development. And this struggle will have an impact only if we effectively ensure coordination of multi-form action in the context of the third United Nations decade for the elimination of poverty, to wit 2018-2027 and Agenda 2030. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegation, the security situation in the G5 Sahel space is still a source of concern. Above and beyond Burkina Faso and in my capacity as the chair of the G5 Sahel, I'd like to recall here to the international community how important it is to sustain the G5 Sahel countries in their determined fight against terrorism and in order to promote development. Indeed, the actions of terrorist arms group are spreading geographically both within our countries and outside the G5 Sahel space. And this is clear evidence that it is important to take initiatives and measures urgently. In this regard, the Accra Initiative and the ECOWAS Summit, which was held on 14 September last, to look at the issue of security in West Africa, are commendable. These initiatives indicate that the struggle against terrorism needs to be at the regional level. And at this stage, I am very pleased that the G5 Sahel well supported by the Secretary General before the Security Council, their requests to the Security Council were favorably looked upon through the adoption of Resolution 2480 and renewal of the MINUSMA mandate. Through this resolution, MINUSMA will bring support to all battalions operating in the joint force of the G5 Sahel and in that theater with the condition that they be working with other partners who would assume responsibility for and provide assistance to operation zones above and beyond the Malian territory. During the extraordinary summit of ECOWAS in Ouagadougou to discuss terrorism, heads of state noted the inoperative nature of MINUSMA in dealing with the terrorist threat in Mali due to the limits of its mandate conferred upon it by the Security Council. It would seem inconceivable that with 12,000 men and substantial means available to it that this force is not able to effectively contribute to the fight against terrorism in Mali. 
That is why, with the urging of my peers in ECOWAS and in my capacity as president of the G5 Sahel, I appeal for a more robust and more offensive mandate to be conferred upon MINUSMA. Such a mandate would make it possible to secure and further stabilize Mali and all the other countries in the G5 Sahel region. Also, we call upon the Security Council to grant a mandate under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter to the joint forces of the G5 Sahel in order to ensure that it has ongoing resources. With Germany and France, we proposed during the Biarritz summit of the G7 countries the establishment of an international partnership to promote stability and security in the Sahel, which would include fighting terrorism and action to promote development. Here, I'd like to call upon all partners to adhere to this without reservation because peace and stability in the Sahel are also peace and stability for Africa and for the rest of the world. Mr. President, I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate the acknowledgement of the peoples and governments of my country and those of the G5 Sahel countries to the entire United Nations system and all of our partners for their support and accompaniment, accompaniment of which we have benefited since the beginning of the security and humanitarian crises. And I renew my appeal to bilateral and international solidarity in order to provide the G5 Sahel Joint Forces with the equipment and financial resources necessary to proper functioning in order to favor our national de development programs and regional development programs through priority investment programs. The two pillars are security and development, and they are necessary to ensure stability of the region. Along these same lines, the G5 Sahel country adopted on the 13th of September the exert power this is geared to exploiting solar energy to provide energy to some 60 million people between now and 2030, create jobs, provide access to water, education, agriculture, and health care. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegation, despite the difficult situation in my country, my government is continuing implementation of its program in order to meet the basic needs of our people, to strengthen democracy, and to consolidate the rule of law. Indeed, consolidating economic recovery, fighting unemployment, empowerment of young people and women, and initiatives to promote uh, vulnerable people and good governance are all at the heart of our action. Also, in the context of fighting social inequality, and also to promote harmonious development of all of our country, two instruments to reduce regional disparity and to galvanize local economies have been put in place through the urgent program of the Sahel and Burkina Faso, which has been expanded to the five regions affected by violent extremism and the support program for the development of local economies. Turning to democratic governance, I have confided this to a political dialogue in, in order to have a dialogue with the opposition last June. The dialogue was positive. We did so by instituting legislative regulatory texts that relate to this matter. Sir, turning to fighting climate change, I'd like to first applaud yesterday the Climate Action Summit, the format which, of which made it possible to formulate specific and concrete proposals. I'd also like to commend the success of the States of Parties Conference on the Against Desertification that was held in India recently, and to point out the clear link between desertification and climate change. The countries of the Sahel understood quite well, they who created, as of 1973, the Interstate Committee for Fighting Drought in the Sahel. In Burkina Faso, climate change leads to the displacement of people and exacerbates the conflict between animal husbandry and farmers 
due to the lack of water, scarcity of water, and the rare arable land or land available for animal husbandry. This is why in the context of the prevention and struggle against the impact of climate change, my country has taken a number of important initiatives, a five-year plan for reforestation and a plan for risk reduction and also a disaster preparation plan. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of de delegation, despite the difficult security context, Burkina Faso continues to assume its international obligations by providing support to the United Nations to help other brother and sister nations to find peace. And thus, Burkina Faso, which is one of the great and large troop contributing countries to peacekeeping missions, is present in both Mali and Darfur. In Guinea-Bissau, our troops are participating in the context of the ECOMIB force put in place by ECOWAS, which made it possible to provide a certain amount of stability to this sister nation, making it possible for the first time that the president of a republic finish his term. Moreover, efforts have been undertaken to increase women's contribution, to take into account gender in peacekeeping missions of the United Nations. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegation, at this time that when we are meeting international news has been marked by tension and threats to international peace and security. While we are all present here at each session of the General Assembly, and that is because we believe in the United Nations capacity, a symbol par excellence of multilateralism and diplomacy, a symbol of being able to find lasting solutions to major challenges and also to the various crises that affect us in different parts of the world. The security crisis in the Jihel Sahel space is a direct result of the destructuring of the and breakdown of the Libyan state. And thus I call upon the international community to mobilize and find a solution for lasting peace in that country because it's only through settling the security crisis in Libya that we will find peace in my own country. And on this topic, Burkina Faso commends the United Nations mediation and strongly recommends involvement of the African Union in the hopes of their joint efforts leading to a solution of the Libyan crisis. With regard to Western Sahara, Burkina Faso reiterates its support to the political process, and we call upon the United Nations to appoint a joint uh, representative who well understands the situation in Libya to help find a solution to the problem. Turning to Western Sahara, Burkina Faso reiterates its support to the political process underway under the exclusive auspices of the Secretary General of the United Nations with a view to finding a mutually acceptable and negotiated solution politically to the dispute as recommended by the Security Council since 2007 and through its resolution 2468 adopted in April of 2019. Burkina Faso is pleased with the effective holding of two round tables, including Algeria, Morocco, Mauritania, and the Polisario, keeping with resolutions 2414 and 2440 of the Security Case Council. And I take this opportunity to here applaud the work of the former Special Envoy, the Secretary General of the United Nations, during his term. Given the regional nature of this dispute, Burkina Faso would call upon all states in the region to make their contributions to the political process and strengthen their participation in the negotiations. In the Middle East, the Palestinian question continues to be a major source of concern in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and Burkina Faso reiterates its support for a two-state solution with Israel and Palestine living together in peace and as good neighbors. Burkina Faso strongly condemns the aggressions and attacks repeatedly against Saudi Arabia and its oil facilities. Regardless of where these attacks have come from, these attacks are a serious threat to peace in Saudi Arabia and for the region as a whole, and that's why we solemnly call for a cessation of these acts of hostility. As to the commercial financial and trade embargo imposed on Cuba by the United States, 
Burkina Faso believes it is time to lift it, given the harm it is doing to the Cuban people and has done for some years now. Mr. President, distinguished delegate, international peace and security are threatened by the possibility of an arms escalation. This is why Burkina Faso supports all multilateral initiatives and actions geared to disarmament both of weapons of mass destruction and disarmament of conventional weapons. Moreover, even today more than yesterday, there is clear evidence that proliferation of light arms and small weapons is a threat to international peace and security in various regions of the world, but especially in West Africa and the Sahel, and it is a weight on our ability to achieve the sustainable development goals. Also, I would urge states to allocate resources set forth by disarmament programs to the financing of ODA and to the Green Development Fund and the Green Fund. This would provide an opportunity for millions of poor people to have better prospects for the future. Sir, yesterday we held the Climate Action Summit and the high-level meeting on universal health care, and we hope that all of these initiatives will make it possible to create a dynamic and political support at all levels in order to bolster the private sector's commitment in order to leverage as much as possible their innovative solutions and finance ODA. In this regard, we would congratulate the Secretary General for launching the World Alliance for Investors for Development that met yesterday, the 23rd of September. This pool will be made up of 25 to 30 CEOs of huge corporations from around the world who will be using their knowledge and know-how to provide further investment in the long run for sustainable development as a glimmer of hope at a time when financing is increasingly rare. Like all countries, it's with the specific attention of Burkina Faso as following negotiations between governments on the reform of the Security Council. Also, we are looking at the negotiations and following carefully all issues relating to revitalizing the General Assembly, partnership, and regional organizations and sub-regional organizations. With regard to reform, I would quote, the future that we want, the United Nations, that we need, reaffirm collective commitment to multilateralism, end of quote. Burkina Faso is of the hope that finally, after negotiations that have been underway for 20 years, these negotiations will lead to all of our wishes being fulfilled. That is, a Security Council which is more representative of the 193 member states of the United Nations in the two categories of members with all the privileges and obligations conferred upon them. This is the time to renew Burkina Faso's complete adherence to the common position, the position of Africa, as reflected in the Ezurwini Consensus and the CERT Declaration. In commemorating the 24th of April 2019 as the first International Day of Multilateralism and Diplomacy in the Service of Peace, in doing so, the United Nations reaffirm the importance of multilateralism and one where in our world of today, global challenges and can only be met together. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the FASO and President of the Council of Ministers of Burkina Faso for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the Head of State.